so good morning all of you welcome back to the hydrogen and hydraulic machinery uh, subject and uh, in the previous module we have seen about uh, uh, the basics of the turbo machines more particularly about uh, the estimation of the hydrodynamic force and the application of the momentum equation when a liquid jet strikes a stationary or a moving uh, flat plates which may be held normal or inclined in today's class uh, we see about the hydrodynamic force in respect of curved vanes usually the term vane itself shows that it is uh, a, a surface which is curved in nature so curved vane do appear to be redundant we use it like uh, in the case of vanes it is a curved surface and in the case of uh, um, flat surfaces we use a word plate and the vane is a general term which will be used either for a flat surface or for a curved surface also that is the reason why more specifically it is shown that it is a curved vane that matter but uh, what is required to be understood here is that the hydrodynamic force is to be computed by applying the uh, momentum equation or any other equation if required uh, to determine the hydrodynamic force when a liquid jet is striking the surfaces or the plates which are or the surfaces having the curved surface so we have different cases for this the force exerted by the free jets on the stationary or moving vanes now in today's class we have the stationary or moving vanes or curved surfaces in the earlier case when we are using a plate we say that it is held normal or held inclined but for the case of a curved surface we we calculate with respect to whether with respect to the jet direction whether the surface is symmetric or asymmetric with respect to the jet direction whether the curved surface is symmetric or asymmetric so this we try to uh, I, i would like to ask all of you to please make a note of this in the case of a plate we say that it is held with held normal with respect to the jet direction suppose if this is the jet direction and if the plate is held like this so this is held normal or held inclined held inclined okay normal inclined but but in the case of the curved surfaces we say that this is the curved surface with respect to the jet direction whether this vane he is positioned symmetric or asymmetric symmetric or asymmetric similarly for the moving uh, curved surfaces also whether it is symmetric or asymmetric so we try to see what are these theoretical cases and what are the more practical cases and how do we apply the uh, impulse momentum principle for finding the hydrodynamic thrust or impact yesterday we have seen five cases of all the five cases we found that the fifth case is the more practical one where you have a number of plates which are connected over the periphery of a wheel and the liquid jet may be striking from one plate at one position since the liquid jet is striking the plate there the plate moves away from its position and immediately the next plate comes in place as if no the entire wheel will be rotating and as if the liquid jet is striking a single plate it sits at its position since the way the, the wheel is rotating we will be able to now find what is the work done and what is the efficiency and we found that the maximum efficiency can never exceed 50% when a wheel is mounted with flat plates when the wheel is mounted with flat plates that too without considering all the losses if we start considering the impact loss if we start considering the frictional loss this maximum efficiency also would be a little lower than um, the 50% it could be even 30 35 40 45 and so on So, uh, so how to improve the efficiency how to improve the efficiency so in today's class we try to see some of the theoretical aspects instead of having a flat surface if we have a curved surface how it would change how it would affect the efficiency the efficiency so case 6 force exerted by the fluid when the jet strikes on a stationary symmetrical curved vane at its center so the usual uh, notion is that when the liquid jet is striking this is the direction of the jet so v is the velocity of the jet so with respect to the jet direction with respect to the jet direction if the vane is placed symmetric then we say that it is symmetrical curved vane and when you have a symmetrical curved vane it is presumed that the liquid jet may be striking at the center striking at the center if it is asymmetrical curved vane it is presumed that 
the liquid jet may be striking at one of the tips at one of the tips of the vein it could be possible even for the unsymmetrical carotid vein also it may strike in, in a particular direction say x direction it it may strike in a particular direction say x direction then you will be able to find what would be the thrust so let us try to understand the concept try to implement the momentum equation and try to arrive at the, the hydrodynamic force slowly one by one k6 force exerted when we have a fly a fluid jet which is striking a symmetrical carotid vein so uh, this is the symmetrical carotid vein the hatched portion which is shown here is a symmetrical uh, carotid vein which is stationary this is a fixed carotid vein and the liquid jet is striking at the center with a jet velocity of v if this is striking uh, with a jet velocity uh, v then it strikes here after striking it is assumed that the liquid jet glides over the surface it glides over the surface of the vein and leaves at this tip so these tips uh, these are the tips of the veins it may leave at these tips so with respect to the original jet direction there is a deflection for the jet there is a deflection for the jet so if the included angle is theta if this included angle is theta with respect to the jet direction then the angle through which the jet, the jet gets de deflected would be 180 minus theta so after striking at the center of the curved vein the liquid jet is assumed to glide over the surface of this curved, curved vein and leaves at its tips and leaves tangentially at its tips this is another assumption so it is assumed that the liquid jet leaves tangentially at the tips and the angle of deflection of the jet becomes 180 minus theta and this is a, a stationary carotid vein a stationary carotid vein a more detailed a sketch is provided here so the included angle is theta and angle of deflection of the jet with respect to the original jet direction this is the original jet direction x with respect to the original jet direction angle of deflection of the jet is 180 minus theta 180 minus theta so let a horizontal a jet of cross sectional area a velocity v and it is striking a smooth symmetric curved vein at its center on the concave side okay you can see you can observe in the figure that it is striking at the center on the concave side and this is a smooth symmetric curved vein smooth symmetric curved vein the vein being smooth the velocity of the jet which is leaving also will be v let us go back once again to the figure so the liquid jet with the velocity v is striking at the center and if you assume that there is no impact losses and if there are no frictional losses so if the surface is so smooth we may assume that there is no there are no frictional losses so if the impact losses are nil and if the frictional losses are nil then the liquid jet which is striking at the center of this vein glides smoothly over this and leaves with the same velocity v it is leaving with the same velocity this v but the direction is changed you may observe this is the x direction and the velocity v also is initially in the same x direction incoming jet is having a velocity v along x direction whereas the leaving jet the leaving jet is having the same magnitude v but it is leaving tangential to the outlet tip of the vein in a different direction the angle of deflection from the figure you may see it is 180 minus theta okay the vein being smooth the velocity of the leaving jet also may be v if you consider the shock losses because of the sudden impact of the liquid jet if you consider the friction losses as the liquid is flowing over the surface of the vein probably the velocity of the leaving jet may not be equal to the velocity of the inlet jet the velocity of the leaving jet may not be equal to the velocity of the inlet jet why this is happening this because you are accounting for the various losses like shock loss friction loss etc in which case the velocity of the leaving jet may be different from the velocity of the incoming jet let it to the to be the angle between the tangents drawn to the vein at the outlet tip so this is the two theta so you, a, a tangent is drawn at the outlet tip and another tangent is drawn at the outlet tip and the included angle between these two tangents is two theta that means on one side with respect to the original jet direction you have an included angle of theta you have included angle of theta similarly this side also you have another included angle of theta so let two theta be the angle between the tangents drawn to the vein 
at its outlet tips thus the jet after striking will be deflected on each side through an angle of 180 minus theta angle of deflection is 180 minus theta thus the component of the velocity of the leaving jet in the same flow direction of incoming jet would be so so incoming uh, liquid jet is having a velocity v before it is striking that means incoming liquid jet the the leaving or outgoing liquid jet is having a velocity v with angle of deflection of 180 minus theta 180 minus theta so if you take the component of this velocity v the component of the velocity v along this jet direction with respect to this jet direction it becomes 180 minus 180 v of cos 180 minus theta or minus v cos theta minus v cos theta will be the component of the velocity of the leaving jet in the direction of the flow in the direction of the flow apply the impulsive momentum equation force exerted will be equal to mass rate into change of velocity mass rate into change of velocity so mass rate rho a v because it's a, a, a fixed liquid jet and, and the vane also is fixed the vane also is something like case one where you have the liquid jet striking a, a stationary flat plate now in this case a liquid jet is striking a stationary curved plate that is only the difference so mass rate is rho a v into change of velocity initial velocity minus final velocity so before striking it has got a velocity v and after striking it has got a velocity of v cos 180 minus theta or minus v cos theta so v minus minus v cos theta minus v cos theta so what is this negative sign the negative sign in this case indicates that the velocity the component of the velocity the leaving jet is opposing the flow direction opposing the original jet direction okay so v minus minus v cos theta or it is rho a v square into 1 plus cos theta please try to note that you have made certain assumptions here the first and foremost assumption that we have made is the liquid jet is striking the liquid jet is striking at the center of the vein second the liquid jet is striking at the center without any shock losses third the entire curved surface is so smooth that the liquid jet can simply glide over the surface after striking at the center without having any frictional losses without having any frictional losses so these assumptions the velocity of the incoming liquid jet is v the velocity of the leaving liquid jet will be minus v cos theta so you have v minus v minus v cos theta or rho a v square into 1 plus cos theta rho a v square into 1 plus cos this is the force exerted this is the force exerted if just compare this with the first case just compare this with the first case what is the first case the first case is the one where you have a liquid jet striking a flat plate. The liquid jet striking a flat plate. The force exerted is rho a v square there. Now you are, the liquid jet is striking a curved surface. The curved surface and with respect to the tangents, with respect to the tangents drawn at the inlet and outlet or at the outlet tips of the vein, you have included an angle of 2 theta and the angle of deflection would be 180 minus theta and hence the component of the a uh, leaving jet velocity will be v cos 180 minus theta and hence the force exerted will be rho a v square into 1 plus cos theta when theta is equal to 90 degrees what will happen the curved vein is reduced to a flat plane because the included angle we have so shown in the figure as theta so if the theta is becoming 90 degrees then the liquid jet the case reduces as if you know the liquid jet is striking a flat plate held normal a flat plate held in normal theta becomes 90 degrees so if you substitute the cos 90 here and hence your rho a v square that this is reduced to case one this is reduced to case one rho a v square f is equal to rho a v square force exerted would be equal to rho a v square and the force exerted is equal to rho a v square into one plus cos theta is a case by where the liquid jet is striking the liquid jet is striking a symmetric curved vein at the center when theta is equal to zero the other case when a theta can become zero here, the vein becomes a semicircular vein. Instead of having a simple curve, it is a semicircular. It is a semicircular vein. So if the vein is becoming a semicircular vein, the force exerted would be how much? Rho a v square into 1 plus cos theta cos 0. Cos theta cos 0. So cos so you will be having 2 into rho a v square 1 plus 1. <coughs> 2 into rho a v square, which indicates that the force exerted in the case of a semicircular vein would be double that of the force exerted by a flat plate.
by a flat plate. So when the liquid jet is striking a curved surface, the exerted force would be double that of a flat plate. So force exerted by a semicircular vein is twice that of a flat plate. Okay. Next case, <coughs> force exerted by the fluid when the jet is striking a stationary unsymmetrical curved vein at one of the tips, as indicated when when the vein is unsymmetrical the vein is unsymmetrical it is assumed that the liquid jet may be striking at one of the tips that is possible that is also possible so in this case you may you may you may note here that this is the unsymmetrical curved vein with respect to the x direction with respect to the direction x axis what we call is axis of the vein so with respect to the axis of the vein you may notice that the vein is positioned unsymmetrical so for this unsymmetrical vein, it is assumed that the liquid jet may be striking at one of the tips. So such a tip is called inlet tip. After striking here, the liquid jet is assumed to glide over the surface because the surface is assumed to be so smooth and the leaves at its outlet tip with the same velocity V. It leaves at the outlet tip with the same velocity V. So have you identified what is the difference between the previous and this figure, the previous case and this case? In the previous case, where you have a symmetrical curve vein, so the liquid jet is assumed to strike directly at the center. In this case, the liquid the, the vein is assumed unsymmetrical. Since the vein is unsymmetrical with respect to the axis of the vein, the liquid jet is assumed to strike at one of the tips. So where the liquid jet is entering is called inlet tip, where the liquid jet is leaving is called outlet tip. You see here, this is the inlet tip. The last V is the velocity of the incoming liquid jet which is striking at the inlet tip of the vein. No shock losses once again. Assume no shock losses. There are no frictional losses. And the liquid, the liquid jet smoothly glides over the surface of this unsymmetrical curved vein and leaves tangentially at the outlet tip with the same elastic V, but in a different direction. But in a different direction. So what is the original direction? With respect to the axis of the vein, V, this incoming liquid jet is having this direction, having an inclination of theta with respect to the axis of the vein. With respect to the axis of the vein, the inclination of the incoming liquid jet is theta. Then, since the vein is unsymmetrical here, the leaving liquid jet, if you draw the tangent at the outlet tip, uh, then you have an inclination of phi. Theta and phi both are different because you have unsymmetrical curve vein unsymmetrical curve vein. So in this case, what is the angle of deflection of the jet? So theta is uh, with respect to the axis of the vein, you have an inclination of theta for the incoming liquid jet and you have an inclination of phi uh, with respect to um, the axis of the vein for the outgoing liquid jet or leaving liquid jet, leaving liquid jet. Then, then what is the ang angle of deflection? So this is the original direction. This is the original direction of the jet. With respect to this original direction, you have total 180 degrees minus theta minus phi. 180 degrees minus theta minus phi is the angle of deflection of the jet. Angle of deflection of the jet. So keeping this in mind, say small a, the cross-sectional area of the liquid jet, and V is the velocity of the incoming liquid jet, which is striking at one of the tips, say inlet tip. Then that the tangent of the inlet tip makes an angle theta with the axis of the vein or horizontal x-axis and outlet tip makes an angle phi which is the horizontal x-axis. Then angle of deflection of the jet would be 180 minus theta minus phi or 180 minus theta plus phi. Then what is the component of the velocity of the incoming liquid jet with respect to the horizontal axis? With respect to the horizontal axis, what is the component of the velocity v for the incoming liquid jet? It becomes v cos theta. Similarly, for uh, the uh, component of the velocity for the leaving liquid jet with respect to the horizontal axis would be v cos phi. Apply the impulse momentum uh, principle, force exerted would be equal to mass rate into change of velocity. Mass rate into change of velocity. So the force along x direction, that means along the axis of the vein that you are taking, then you will be having rho a v, the mass rate into change of velocity, v cos theta for the incoming liquid jet component and minus v cos phi for the outgoing liquid jet. Why this minus n once again? Minus n is because when you are taking v cos phi, it is opposing the original jet direction. 
the component of the leaving liquid jet is opposing the original jet direction you may you may note here so this is v and having inclination phi here so v cos phi v cos phi is the component of the leaving liquid jet with respect to the x axis or horizontal axis with respect to the x axis or horizontal axis so this v cos phi is opposing and hence you have an angle of phi we have an angle of phi so you have my negative sign rho a b mass rate into change of velocity v cos theta minus minus v cos phi or rho a b square into cos theta plus cos phi is the force along the horizontal direction or x direction similarly you will be able to compute the force in the normal direction also vertical direction f phi would be equal to rho a b square into sin theta minus sin phi of course the resultant force can be computed as square root of fx square plus f phi square fx square plus f phi square next force exerted by the fluid jet when the jet is striking a, a moving symmetrical curved vane at the center we are following the same sequence what we have seen in the earlier class also only thing is in this particular cases we have seen instead of having a plate we have a vane instead of having a flat plate we have a curved vane so the liquid jet is striking uh, and it is a symmetrical curved vane and the vane is moving the vane is moving so consider a liquid jet striking a single symmetrical moving curved vane and the vane is assumed to move in the same direction as that of the jet so same assumption what are the assumptions that we have made like the liquid jet may be striking the symmetrical curved vane at the center the symmetrical curved vane at the center and the vane is moving with the same angle with the same symmetry along the direction of the jet after striking along the direction of the jet after striking so let v be the velocity of the liquid jet and after striking let the vane moves with the velocity of small u in the same direction as that of the liquid jet you see here the dotted portion indicates that it is a position of the vane after striking whereas the solid hatched portion indicates that this is the position of the vane just before striking just before striking so v is the velocity of the liquid jet striking a symmetrical curved vane at the center since it is it, 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 it is striking here the vane is thus moving the vane is thus moving in the same direction the vane is moving in the same direction with a velocity of small u with a velocity of small u since it is a symmetrical curved vane you may notice that the included angle is theta only 2 theta only the included angle is 2 theta is not theta plus y because it is a symmetrical vane it is a symmetrical vane okay since both are moving in the same direction the relative velocity becomes v minus u so what is the effective mass rate with which the liquid is striking the effective mass rate would be by considering the relative velocity in other words the, the effective velocity with which the liquid jet may be striking is v minus u accordingly the effective mass rate of a fluid will be mass density into effective volume rate rho into a into v minus u is the mass rate rho into a into v minus u is the mass rate okay so before striking it has got a velocity of v minus u effective velocity the relative velocity v minus u and the angle of deflection of jet of the jet is 180 minus theta as we have seen in the figure it is angle of deflection of the jet is 180 minus theta so it is leaving at this point it is leaving so its component will be v minus u cos 180 minus theta the component of the velocity with respect to the jet direction would be v minus u cos 180 minus theta is the velocity of the leaving jet component and v minus u is the velocity of the incoming liquid jet okay so the force force exerted would be mass rate into change of velocity rho a v minus u mass rate into change of velocity initial velocity v minus u minus the final velocity v minus u cos 180 minus theta please note one very important point here why why do we consider v minus u why, why it is not rho a v why it is not rho a v why it is between rho a v minus u because the vane is moving so the effective velocity with which the liquid jet strikes a single moving curved vane would be v minus u which is which is the relative velocity whereas if you have a series of these plates or vanes which are connected over the periphery of a wheel, it becomes rho AV once again. Because if the first plate is moving or first vane is moving, if it is connected over the mounted on a wheel, the second vane comes in position. 
the second vein comes in position when the liquid jet is striking it moves in the third vein comes as if no the liquid jet is striking a single stationary stationary curved vein but here we have a single vein here and this vein is moving away from its position and hence the effective velocity would be the relative velocity v minus u accordingly the effective mass rate would be rho a into v minus u i hope this point is clear to you so rho a v, v minus u is the effective mass rate into change of velocity v minus u minus v minus u cos 180 minus theta so taking out v minus u common here you will be getting 1 minus cos 180 minus theta which is equal to 1 plus cos theta so rho a v minus u square into 1 plus cos theta is the force exerted since the vein is moving you will be able to compute the work done and efficiency also so work done per second would be force into the distance moved per second the distance moved per second so the force would be equal to i mean uh, it would be it is not force a small correction here uh, work done would be equal to work done would be equal to the force rho a v minus u square into 1 plus cos theta into the distance moved by the vein per second is velocity of the vein velocity of the vein small u into small u so kinetic energy is applied is half of mv square kinetic energy is applied per second would be half of mv square per second or half of what is m it is mass per second into v square m is mass per second into v square so half of mass rate into v square or half of rho a b into v square half of rho a b cube so substituting that you have the efficiency of the jet as work done per second divided by the kinetic energy supplied per second kinetic energy supplied per second so accordingly we have rho a b minus whole square into one minus one plus cos theta into small u by half of rho a b cube on on simplification you may cancel rho a and rho a here 2 by v cube 2 by v cube into v minus u whole square into one plus cos theta into small u for this efficiency to be maximum this differential with respect to u must be equal to zero so theta by du must be equal to zero differentiating eta with respect to u and equating it to zero differentiating eta with respect to u and equating it to zero so d by du, du of 2 by v cube which may be a constant 1 plus cos theta also is a constant which can be taken out of the differential and what is left out now v minus u whole square into u v minus u whole square into u must be differentiated with, with respect to u so v square plus u square minus 2 v u into u so accordingly you need to uh, differentiate and uh, perform the differentiation and you will be getting uh, a quadratic equation with the solution like v is equal to u or v is equal to 3 what is this v is equal to u which means that the velocity of the liquid jet must be equal to the velocity of the vein the velocity of the vein second is the velocity of the liquid jet must be equal to three times the velocity of the vein so in the first case in the first case v is equal to u that means the liquid jet velocity is equal to the vein velocity in that case no jet cannot strike the vein because both are having same velocity the moment it tries to come here to strike this also must be moving with the same velocity so it cannot strike so what we have then becomes zero so more practical case would be the velocity of the vein must be less than the velocity of the jet in the earlier case in in the previous module we have seen that when you have a single moving flat plate the velocity uh, we have seen to be equal to half v is equal to 2 into u in, in this case now it is v is equal to 3 u accordingly what is the efficiency the corresponding maximum efficiency taking v is equal to 3 u and substituting in this equation you will be getting the maximum velocity being equal to 8 by 27 into 1 plus cos theta 8 by 27 into 1 plus cos theta. This is the maximum velocity. However, this maximum velocity depends on the value of theta. Further, since you are taking a single moving curved vein, it may not be of a very practical use. So, uh, quite naturally, we would like to move towards a practical case. Case then, force exerted by the fluid and the jet strikes on a series of moving symmetrical curved veins. I am repeating once again. Uh, no need to worry, but you need to understand what is this. We have a symmetrical curved vein which is stationary and symmetrical curved vein which is stationary third case is that a symmetrical curved vein which is moving which is moving which is not a practical case as we have seen in the previous chapters that the liquid jet when it is striking a series of moving curved veins which are connected over the periphery half a vein this has got certain meaning so a single moving curved vein is not a practical case because the vein moves away from the uh, jet after the jet strikes in the first instance therefore 
the jet cannot strike the vane continuously. So vane is away from the purview of the jet. Hence, a more practical case would be like a, a jet striking a series of vanes which are mounted on a wheel, which are mounted on a wheel. Just refer to and compare to the case five with respect to this case. In the, in the case five, we have seen that the liquid jet may be striking a series of flat plates in which case the maximum efficiency can never exceed 50%. Let us try to see in this case whether the efficiency could be more or less. Consider a wheel consisting of a series of curved wings which are mounted on the periphery of a wheel and let the jet strikes the wings at its center one after the other. The liquid jet is striking, the liquid jet is striking these wings at its center. The moment the liquid jet strikes, the vane moves away, immediately the next vane comes in position. Since the vane is in the path of quick succession, the entire water issuing from the nozzle strikes the plates one after the other. So the jet strikes the vane as if it is striking a single vane in a stationary position. Hence the mass rate of a flow would be equal to mass density into the effective discharge which is equal to A into V only. It is not. A into V minus U. You don't need to consider the relative velocity or the effective velocity. It is the absolute velocity of the liquid jet directly. The reason being, since you have number of veins which are connected over the periphery of a wheel, if the liquid jet is striking the first vein, the first vein is moving away, leading to the rotation for the wheel, which results in the second vein to come in position. The moment the wheel attains a specific speed there, one after the other, first way and second way and third way will come in position, the liquid jet strikes. No amount of water will be wasted. Of course, a little amount of water would be wasted. Otherwise, entire jet of water which is coming out would be directly striking the wind. Hence, the case reduces as if, no, the liquid jet is striking a single stationary curved vane, which is symmetric and the liquid jet is striking at the center. So the mass rate of flow would be the effective mass rate of flow, which is equal to rho a into v. So the velocity before striking is v minus u and having a deflection of jet 180 minus theta as we have seen in the symmetrical curved vane, where the liquid jet is striking at the center. So the final velocity component will be v minus u cos 180 minus theta. Apply the momentum equation, the force exerted would be equal to mass rate into change of velocity. Mass rate into change of velocity, rho a v into what is the change of velocity? V minus u initial velocity minus v minus u cos 180 minus theta. V minus u cos 180 minus theta. So taking out v minus u is common from both the terms here, you have 1 minus cos 180 minus theta r which is equal to 1 plus cos theta. So rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta is the force exerted. Correspondingly, the work done per second would be force into the distance moved per second by the vane. Per second, it is the velocity of the vane, small u. So f into u, f into u. So rho a v, v minus u into 1 plus cos theta into small u. So kinetic energy is applied will be half of mv square. Kinetic energy is applied per second would be half of mv square per second. What is m? It is mass. So mass per second into v square. Half of mass rate into v square or half of rho a v into v square. Half of rho a v cube. So work done per second divided by the kinetic energy supplied per second would give you the hydraulic efficiency of the liquid jet eta. Work done per second by kinetic energy supplied per second. Rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta into small u divided by half of rho a v cube. So by simplifying the efficiency of the liquid jet in this case would be 2 by v square into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta into small u. Condition for maximum efficiency can always be achieved. For eta to be maximum, differentiate eta with respect to u and equate it to 0. So d by d, d eta by du or d by du of eta must be equal to 0. 2 by v square, v minus u, 1 plus cos theta into small u must be equal to 0. So what are the things which can be taken out of the differential here? What are the things which can be taken out of the differential here? 2 by v square and also 1 plus cos theta can be taken out of the differential. 2 by v square into 1 plus cos theta can be taken out of the differential into d, d by du of 2u into v minus u. 2u into v minus u. So it's something like you know, p into q is equal to 0. So either p or q must be equal to 0. And taking taking this constant 2 by v square into 1 plus cos theta to the other side, it will be 0 by all this. So it becomes 0. And you have simply differential of u into v minus u. Differential of u into v minus u must be equal to 
zero. Or v u minus u square must be equal to zero. Or v minus two u is zero. Or v is equal to two u. This is the condition for the maximum efficiency when a liquid jet is striking a series of symmetrical curved wings mounted on a wheel. Symmetrical curved wings mounted on a wheel. If you remember and recollect, same thing, same condition we obtained in the earlier case also. In case number five, where you have liquid jet striking a series of flat plates. Here, series of symmetrical curved wings. Here, in that case, it is series of flat plates. In that case, also v is equal to u. But now, if you substitute in the efficiency equation, you may note here the condition for the maximum efficiency would be eta at, at v is equal to two u. If you substitute that, two u minus u becomes u into two u. So you have two u square by four u square into one plus cos theta. So substituting here, you will be getting the maximum efficiency to be equal to one plus cos theta by two. In case five, we obtain that it can never exceed fifty percent. We have got a numerical value there, but here we have not got a numerical value. Instead, we have got we have got an expression in terms of theta. One plus cos theta by two would be the maximum efficiency. Let us see what is this theta, and what would be the probable values of this theta. Theta may become ninety degrees. This is one usual case when theta is becoming ninety degrees. What happens? The liquid jet strikes instead of having a symmetrical curved wing, it becomes a flat plate. It becomes a flat plate. So the liquid is jet strikes a flat plate. Then when theta is becoming ninety degrees, the curved wing becomes a flat plate, which is held normal to the direction of the jet, and the corresponding efficiency would be substituting theta equal to ninety degrees here, one plus cos ninety by two, or one by two, fifty percent, which is same as the case where we have a liquid jet striking a flat plate held normal. On a series of flat plates held normal, where you have maximum efficiency fifty percent. But when theta is becoming zero, this is very interesting. When theta is becoming zero, the symmetrical curved wing becomes a semicircular wing, half circle. It becomes a semicircular wing. So if you provide a semicircular wing, then what would be the maximum efficiency? The maximum efficiency will be one plus cos theta by two becomes one plus cos zero by two, two. cos zero one one plus one by two. Or two by two, or it is hundred percent. The maximum efficiency becomes hundred percent when you have when you have a, a series of symmetrical curved wings mounted on a wheel. This is a more practical case to have or to achieve the highest efficiency, highest hydraulic efficiency. But however, there are certain difficulties even in this also to achieve full hundred percent. The simple reason is that we have been coming out. With the several assumptions, so this is only a theoretical maximum efficiency. This is point number one. This is a theoretical maximum efficiency. This is point number one. Then, what is the difference between theoretical maximum and practical? We made certain assumptions for which you need to use certain allowances also. Like there may be shock loss, there may be frictional loss. Apart from this, there may be one more specific loss also here. That is what is called loss due to back thrust. Loss due to back thrust. How it happens? Let us see. When you are in, when you are using a symmetrical curved wing, the value of the, the included angles will be theta, two theta in this case. So the angle of deflection always will be one eighty minus theta, one eighty minus theta. But when theta is becoming zero, what is happening here? The angle of deflection is becoming one eighty minus zero, exactly one eighty degrees, which means. Whatever is the direction with which the liquid jet is striking, with the same direction, with the same angle, but in the opposite direction, the liquid is coming out. Since the liquid is coming out with the same uh, angle uh, in the opposite direction, there is a very possibility that the liquid jet, which is coming out from the first wing, may obstruct the motion of the second wing. For the second wind to come in, it will obstruct because it is moving in the opposite direction. It strikes the second wind. Thereby, there will be certain back thrust. So, because of this loss, we will not be able to expect exact hundred percent. However, there will be a practical maximum of about ninety to ninety-five percent can be achieved by adjusting the angles instead of keeping exactly theta being equal to zero with the angle of deflection being one eighty degrees. But you may adjust and design the wind. In such a way that the angle of deflection is about 165 to 170 degrees by designing at an angle of deflection of 165 to 170 degrees. 
practically we will be able to achieve the highest efficiency of about 90 